So I'll talk about the Bhagavad Gita perspective on this issue from three points, principle, practice, and preference. Principle, some people say that this is just a huge controversy over nothing. Is the name going to change anything? But India is still going to have so many poor people. India will still be what it is, whether it's called Bharat or not. Well, this school of thought has precedence. Shakespeare famously said that, what's in a name? A rose will smell just as sweet if called by any other name. It's true, but not completely true. Why not? Because within the philosophy of language, it's understood that words themselves have both denotations and connotations. Denotations means they are pointers to objects. They denote certain objects. But connotations refer to what they remind us of. So we could say words are links between the object on one side and the person on the other side. So yes, a word is not going to change the attributes of the object. So in that sense, Shakespeare is true. But the word can change the experience of the person perceiving the object. If a rose were called by some other name and the person were not familiar with that name, then even without smelling the rose, the experience of the rose that the person has in their memory would not be had if it is called by some other name. So within the broad Vedantic philosophy and specifically Bhakti philosophy, we understand that names are not just placeholders and it could be just interchanged. This is a land and it's a placeholder. This is the name of the person owning the land and the name changes and the owner changes. And so it's just like a placeholder. But names are also pointers and reminders, especially for the person who are observing. And different names can point to different attributes of an object. And they're also different names accordingly can remind a person of different attributes of an object. That's why, for example, within the broad bhakti tradition, there are thousands of names of God. There's a Vishnu Sahasranam. Why thousand names? God has countless attributes and different names remind us of different attributes. So in terms of connotations, the name can make a significant difference. And uh, that is why across the world, there have been change, people sometimes change their names when they go from one country to another. There, there are countries which have changed their names. So the names do matter, not in terms of their connotation, but in terms of their, not in terms of their denotation, but in terms of their connotation. So uh, what does this, all this mean for India? That brings us to the second point of practice, India or Bharat. Now, Yes, both these names could refer to the same object. And both these names are used in the Indian constitution. India, that is Bharat. That is how the constitution refers to the country. Now, India is a name that is widely used today. And many people use it without even thinking what it means or what it reminds them of. At the same time, those who are more reflective, they can trace back into history. And India as a name has two characteristics historically. It is extrinsic and it is geographical. Extrinsic in the sense that it was a name given by outsiders to India. Indians hardly ever refer to themselves as such in the history of India. So, and why was it given by uh, people from outside? Because they referred to it from a, as a geographical marker. There's the river in this. And the land on the other side of the Indus is India. So now that name may not be even a precise geographical marker because the boundaries have changed and Indus is no longer in India, nor does Indus mark the boundary of India. And on the other hand, where does Bharat come from? Bharat, the name has many different origins. There's a Mahabharat verse which talks about Bharat uh, being the land Bharat Varsha, or rather, uh, it's called Bharat Varsha or Arya Varsha, Arya Varta. So now Bharat also can have genealogical roots. 
where there is illustrious king Bharat and that whose dynasty is called as the Bharat dynasty in many ways he's considered to be a significant if not pioneering figure in Indian royal history now specifically which Bharat it was referred to there could there, could, there are many Bharats have been there and there could be some discussion and deliberation on that but beyond such uh, just such uh, genealogical markers we can consider the semantic significance. Bharat. Rat means absorbed. And Bha is a prefix which can refer to Bhaskar, sun. So absorbed in sun. That means absorbed in the light of wisdom. And that describes India's history and India's ethos very evocatively and powerful appropriately, powerfully. India has been rich with many, many seers who had sought and found the light of the ultimate reality. And India has been filled with far more seekers who had themselves sought that light. Tamasoma Jyotirgama, this Upanishadic saying, has been the life's guiding inspirational directive for millions and millions of people living in this country for millennia move from darkness to light and for the world today this message of moving from darkness toward light from for absorbing ourselves in light isn't that a re universally relevant message so this name could be a call reminding everyone of us to move toward light more and more. Light of wisdom, the light of insight, the light of love, the light of the ultimate reality. And as India is exerting itself on the global scene as well as inter within itself in terms of its civilizational heritage, and if India explores and exports its traditional wisdom, which is meant to guide seers and seekers on the journey from darkness to light, then the import of Bharat will be fulfilled for India and by India for the world. That is the real change that is especially important and that the name change can be a harbinger and initiator for that. And that brings us to the last point that is preference. So... Well, ultimately, what a name reminds whom of is up to that person's consciousness. So for millions of Indians, the name Bharat and Bharatiya could remind them more and more of their spiritual tradition, their national heritage. And it could help in changing the historical narrative where, by which India has always been sidelined and demonized. So, the reassertion of a cultural identity of India with, with a certain amount of dignity can be a very positive step and it's a, it's a preference. There should be no obstacle for them in preferring that. At the same time, if some people are uncomfortable with that and they prefer India, there should not be any demonization or uh, penalization of that preference. The Vedic tradition is broad. Ekam Satvipra Bhauda Vadanti. And one absolute truth can be known by many names. Is known by many names. So the same principle can be applied to the truth that is India and Bharat worship.